I forced my wife to go to a party and now my marriage is ruined. I forced my wife to go to a party and now my marriage is ruined. Me and my wife, Kara, have been married for four years now. We had an arranged marriage, but so far we have had a good marriage and a strong bond. I love her and would do anything for her in the blink of an eye. Before we got married, we decided that we will have our own individual space, and we don't have to tell each other everything unless we feel the other person should definitely know. The arrangement went well for years. I didn't have much to hide or to tell, but she did. When I met Kara for the first time, she was a very conservative person and a bit too devoted to religion. She told me that she wasn't a good person in the past, but since then, she has tried to be a good person living a moral life. She told me some details about her past and how she was a wild girl in college and had several relationships and partners. Even after we got married, she would tell me some details about her past, but I never pressed to get details. She always refers to her college self in the third person and whenever she talks about her past, she always says that her college self is a horrible person. Since then, she has been more devoted to religion and is quite different from her previous self. I have seen some pictures and videos and Kara is nothing like that person today. Kara doesn't have a lot of friends and mostly spends her time praying or with other religious stuff. I am the only person she shares her thoughts with. A few months ago, out of the blue, she got a call from her best friend from college, Renee. I saw Kara light up after talking to Renee. Kara felt so happy after reconnecting with Renee and Renee, and Renee invited her to a party at her place. Renee also called up their other friends from college. Kara was conflicted about going to the party. I convinced her to go saying the worst that could happen is that she has a boring night. Kara asked me to come along with her. Even during the drive, I was thinking about getting some embarrassing and funny stories about my wife from her friend. When we reached Renee's place, I realized why Kara was conflicted. Kara was dressed very conservatively, light makeup and very little jewelry. Her friends from college were the exact opposite. They were dressed like tweens going out to party all night. The night started normally about the girls sharing funny tales, but the stories quickly became raunchy and then horrifying. I found out Kara and Renee were the leaders of a group of mean girls. They slept around, abused alcohol and drugs, and on occasions ruined people's lives. Kara stepped away to go to the bathroom. When the group turned to me and told me stories about my wife, Renee talked about Kara sleeping with most of the professors at their college, which I did know about, but wasn't aware the number was that high. Renee purposely told me about how Kara and Renee systematically gaslight a woman into believing that she is a lesbian and ruined her marriage because her husband had rejected Kara's advances, and all the girls found this incident to be funny. I wanted to leave, but I couldn't find Kara. I went to the bathroom to look for her and found her curled up in a corner, crying. I picked her up and left immediately. The entire drive back, Kara was sobbing and kept repeating, I am sorry. She was inconsolable for days and then she threw herself into religion hard. She started praying for six, eight hours every day. Her daily prayers and rituals usually took two hours. I thought that giving her space would help her heal and she would talk to me whenever she is ready. We haven't talked much since then. She still cuddles up in bed but doesn't say anything. Last week she told me that she has decided to be celibate for the rest of her life to repent for her former sin. She asked for my support and apologized for springing it on me. She has told me to leave her if I can't live a celibate life with her. I have tried talking to her about trying therapy, but she is adamant on her plan. I ruined my near-perfect life by forcing her to go to that party. You update. Last night, when we got into bed, I told her I love you and I will wait for you to be ready for me. At the time, I wasn't even sure what I meant. I just had to talk to her. Her eyes swelled up with tears. I can tell she wanted to wail and scream, but was holding back. She grabbed me and didn't want to let go. She whispered, I love you. We held each other for the rest of the night. In the morning, I asked if she would just talk to a therapist. I assured her I would try to support her decisions either way. She agreed and kissed me. We hadn't kissed me. We hadn't kissed in almost two months. I thought my wife was back. But a few minutes later, she texted me from the kitchen, my celibacy doesn't have to mean yours. You are free to leave me. If you want to stay, I will not interfere with your physical needs. It ended me, reading the text.
We haven't said a word to each other since then. Second, updating. Kara started therapy thanks to the efforts of some members of her religious group. She will need a lot of time and I don't know if I will ever get my wife back. Everyone keeps telling me that she will get better soon, but I am not sure if she would still be my wife when she does. Even if she does come back, I have heard things about her past that make it very hard for us to just continue our relationship. Some details make me feel that Kara doesn't deserve happiness. For now, I will support her to help with her recovery, but I am not sure what happens after. Story 2. Cheating ex is pregnant with my child. Long story short, I was engaged until I found messages confirming that my fiancé had cheated on me when her and a friend had a three-way with a guy I know while I was away working. This was apparently early into our engagement and I found out almost a year later. She had remained in contact with all parties and even snuck behind my back to hang out with them on multiple occasions before I knew anything was going on. She never even admitted to cheating, with proof in hand, until I confronted the guy myself. She claims it was an isolated incident, but there's tons of other factors and occasions that just don't add up. Fast forward to about four weeks after I kicked her out, she comes back claiming that she's pregnant. At first, I thought it was a lie, but it's not. Window of conception and all signs point to me being the father, unless she's even more of a piece of poop than I previously thought. So she comes in with this new development thinking that I'm going to be happy about it and forgive her, but that's the opposite. She's decided to keep the baby, but I know that I can't ever continue on in a healthy romantic relationship with her, and I can't sacrifice my own happiness to stay with someone just because I may now be having a child with them. I'm going to be the best father I can be if that's what it comes down to, but even though she did what she did to me, I still feel guilty not being a part of the pregnancy other than updates and the odd appointment I can make it to. Basically, I'm looking for any sort of advice or to hear someone else's similar experiences. Also, am I the all whole for not taking her back even though she's pregnant? Edit, edit. Maybe this should have been added for context. We were in what I thought was a healthy relationship and having been engaged and living together. Although a pregnancy was not planned per se, there were no measures taken to prevent it. Obviously, I will be getting a DNA test, but sadly it seems that I am a victim of horrible timing. Also, I've seen ultrasounds. She's 100s pregnant and it is very most likely mine. Story 3 my ex-wife contacted me out of the blue to tell me the man she cheated with and left me for mistreats her. It told her idgaf and now people are shaming me on my social media. I'm 31 and my ex-wife Claire is 35. We were married 10 years ago, right when I turned 21 and graduated college. We were married 5 years. During my whole marriage, I thought we were happy. I certainly was anyway. I worked in the IT field and still do. We never got into fights during our marriage and our S-time life seemed to be satisfying. A couple of months before I finally caught her with her affair partner, she turned cold to me. Whereas before she had loved to initiate S-time and loved having it with me, suddenly we tapered off, every day turned into once a week, then for the last two weeks, then for the last two weeks, before I outed her, not at all. I caught her because she had left her phone out and it was still open to a naked selfie that she had sent to a number I didn't know. Although I was crushed, I kept my head on and took photos of her phone with my phone. I saw her message stream with her boyfriend, some guy from the gym that I was paying her bill for. I didn't confront her. The texts told me all I needed to know. They had been screwing while I was at work, in my bed. I just kept quiet. Then, the following Saturday, when I knew she would be at her supposed double yoga class and that's why I'll be gone three hours I loaded my stuff into my car and left, I had talked to a divorce attorney and I would be fine. I was 25 and didn't have serious money. Her father had passed away and left her like 200 so she was rolling in dough. I had no claim on that money nor should I have had one. We had no kids although she had always claimed we would start having kids when she turned 30. That birthday came and went, but rather than start having kids with me, she decided to just spread her legs for someone else. Although I was the sole income earner, she was in possession of a vast amount of money, by my standards, and also had a college degree and was a schoolteacher for two years before we got married. 
the divorce papers were left on the kitchen table. She, of course, blew up my phone later with all kinds of apologies and begging and pleading, but I ignored her. A lot of her friends tried to call me and left nasty messages about how I was a coward and never loved her otherwise. How could I ghost her? I ignored all of them. The only person I called was the guy's wife, who promptly dumped him. But I guess it worked out for my ex because she and her boyfriend got married just a few months after the divorce finalized. The only time I ever saw her again was in front of the judge to end our divorce case where I had to pay zero alimony and it was a clean break. She never looked at me once but kept her head down. She brought her boyfriend from the gym and he was flexing, trying to look hard like he was going to fight me. I just shook my head at him and thought he gets what he pays for. I've been on dates since then and have had S time a few times since then but have never been in a long-term relationship since. This was my own choice. In a lot of ways, I'm not over my relationship with her. I don't love her anymore, but I'm turned off to loving anyone now. I reconnected with some of my friends I had neglected during my marriage since my wife disapproved of me being friends with anyone. Facebook used to be an app I used, but pretty much anyone I care about I already see and converse with face-to-face -face or on the phone, so I never use it anymore. Apparently, Claire had spun a narrative that I was mentally abusive and that's why she had no choice but to leave me for a fair partner. My parents didn't buy it and my close associates didn't buy it either. But she tried selling that crap to my boss to get me fired, I guess, as revenge against me ruining her boyfriend's marriage. Ironic that she caped for his marriage when it was his new bachelorhood that helped make a relatively honest woman out of her. I just showed my boss the texts where my ex begged for mercy and forgiveness and admitted she was having an affair and that I was a good husband, etc. He just told me he was sorry and gave me two weeks paid off to rest. Fast forward six years. I'm still single and just working in my same field and at same company but making more money now and I am doing pretty well for myself. My own apartment, I've got savings. I've got a 400 want, a car, and am generally happy. I do what I want, when I want, and answer to no one. I suppose I could put a down payment on a house, but I don't need one, and I'm happy where I'm at. But last week, my ex started texting me again. I never blocked her number, since there was no need to. She hadn't been trying to contact me anymore since the flurry of old messages a long time ago begging me not to divorce her and telling me the other guy, who she is now married to, didn't mean anything to her blah blah blah. At first, her messages were just friendly. Hi up, it's Claire. Long time no see. How are you? I know, I ducked up. Can I call you? Then she tried to call me. At least ten times. I didn't pick up and I didn't answer any of her texts either. Op, this is still your number, right? I talked to Hey Mutual Acquaintance and he says, This is still your number since you replied to him on it. Please talk to me. She then told me how much she missed me and how I was the only man who was ever good to her. Then she started sharing information. Oh, pay a fair partner is such a bastard. He hurts me. I don't know what to do. I made the biggest mistake of my life throwing you away. You were the best thing that ever happened to me. I still ignored her. Then she started naming off different ways that he hurt her. I don't ever want to contact her again, so I texted our mutual acquaintance a person who had joined in on calling me a coward years ago but with whom I still have some contact because I know his family and told him what Claire told me and told him what Claire told me and asked him to get into contact with the proper authorities if what she's saying is true because I don't give a mother ducking poop about Claire anymore and I don't care if she starved to death in the street or died but maybe her friends care. I actually used those words. Looking back, it's obvious I do care. If I bothered to try to send such a hateful message through an intermediary, but I didn't want to get involved otherwise. I also think Claire is trying to manipulate the former nice guy I used to be. The old me would have rushed to her rescue and be a shoulder to cry on. Not anymore. The acquaintance told me I was an evil person and a monster and blah blah blah. I told him to duck himself and blocked him. For the first time in forever, I logged into Facebook. As expected, no one that I used to think of as a friend had ever tried to message me to comfort me or help me back when I was first getting cheated on and divorced. 
I had gotten a lot of support from my family and actual friends and co-workers who had since become outside friends. Tons of people who were her friends had been sending me messages now, telling me they were right to support her because I was abandoning her in her time of need. Like, seriously, what am I supposed to do? I'm her ex-husband and someone she cheated on. They know about the alleged misconduct on the man's part, so as her friends, what are they doing about it? I'm just some guy she used to know and who she hurt. I kept on getting the abuse. I screen-captured all the texts she had sent me recently, as well as years ago. My number never changed, and I never delete anything, and have decided to stop taking high roads on social media and just plastered all their feeds with her texts where she begged me to take her back and she admitted to cheating on me. Finally, they left me alone. Now, she is still texting me, complaining about what I said to the mutual acquaintance and accusing me of never loving her and that I was an evil person. I never replied to her. I feel good about what I did, and in my own sick way, I feel like I have closure. Claire, if you're reading this, duck off and... Redditor's Reactions Story 4 After Redditor 1 You owe her nothing, and it's insane that there are people who think you do. Why isn't she going to those friends for help? because they don't want to deal with her and they want her to be your problem. Hard pass. Nicely done up. Redditor follow-up. Exactly none of them want to get involved, so they're trying to shame up. It's not shocking that after what his ex pulled, she only has friends like that. Redditor 2. This made me proud to read. As much as you want to vent and go mad at the person to make them feel some degree of pain they put you through, ghosting them off and never talking to them ever is the way to go. In the long term, nothing can feel as satisfying. Redditor follow-up. I somewhat agree. People suggesting therapy, but that seldom works. There's no getting over being betrayed or cheated on. Those emotional scars are there for life. Even if you move on, find someone new and everything, there will be a time that it just hits you like a truck. Bam! Out of nowhere, all those feelings just come rushing back. Redditor 3. Bravo! I mean, this is a total saga, but you know what? I would have done the same as you. Petty, yes. Giving you the self-satisfaction you needed, yes. Story 4. I-34 found out my ex-GF-33 died yesterday. We have a kid. Me and my ex were together for about six years. We broke up a little over, over, over a year ago after I found out she was having an affair. We have a three-year-old son together that I love more than anything in the world. She had primary custody of him because I feel like a child should never be torn away from his mother unless the mother is abusive and dare can't raise him properly. Plus, I get to see him whenever I like. So yesterday afternoon, I picked up my son up from his mom's house to spend the rest of the day with me. She went out for drinks later with her friends. I thought nothing of it because she has done this a ton of times. I got a call around 11 p.m. from one of her friends. A call that I never want to hear about someone I'm close with. According to her friend, she was super drunk and couldn't even walk properly. She ran out onto the street and a car hit her. She was rushed to hospital and she died on the way there. I'm in so much pain right now. I loved this woman. We have a beautiful child together. How will I eventually explain this to my son? Redditors. Reactions. Redditor 1. I'm so sorry this happened. I strongly suggest talking to a grief counselor yourself and consulting a child psychologist with regards to your son. They are trained to help you and your son deal with this. Redditor follow-up. This is a very good idea. I lost my father to cancer when I was young. Talking to a counselor prior to his death was a huge benefit to me to understanding and accepting what happened. They will give you tips of age-appropriate ways how to handle his questions as he gets older as well. Also, don't forget to look into receiving Social Security benefits for your son as well. I received them from my father's death until I graduated high school and then some after that in college. It really helped my mother pay bills and support us while we were growing up. Redditor 2. Firstly, I'm sorry for your loss. Second, your son is at a pretty vital age where child development occurs, particularly where bonding attachment is concerned. So I think a Montero 90. Seven is spot on when he or she suggests consulting a child psychologist. Lastly, 
As a mother, the only thing I fear about dying is my kid not being okay when I'm gone. You sound like a good man who loves his child, and in order to do what's best for him, you have to look after yourself as well. Take any support offered to you by friend and family. Develop a steady new routine with your son as soon as possible. Talk to a child psychologist for him and a grief counselor for yourself. Take care. Redditor 3. L. Hugs. I'm so sorry for your loss. Contact her family, who will be making funeral arrangements. File for SE dependent benefits for your son. The monthly payments will help a lot. He's three hours old right now, so you can say, Mommy's gone and keep him busy and distracted. Counseling will help you with the ways to discuss it with him in an age-appropriate manner. Is his child care close enough to keep? Let them know the situation. You may want to look into a nanny or au pair. The survivor's benefits will help pay for that. Take care of yourself. Redditor follow-up. I had a child psychologist tell me not to tell my kids with the words gone or a left. They are too young to not associate this with them abandoning them. They said it's important to explain they died in a different way, slowly over time, so they don't blame themselves for the person just leaving. But otherwise, great advice. Redditor 4. Tell him the truth, man. Take it from someone who was lied to all through childhood about stuff like this. It hurts more to find out you were lied to and someone tried to spare your feelings than it would have been to just know the truth. Obviously, you'll have to edit out some details until he's older, but don't say something silly like she went on vacation because that will cause resentment, etc. Op answer. Of course, I'll tell him the truth, but I'm not exactly sure how to craft it. Redditor 5. I know it's hard to think about it, but you need a lawyer. Now, if there is no custody visitation order, you may need to establish yourself as guardian sooner rather than later. If there's no one else, ex is parents or sibling... It may not be an issue, but better safe than having to hand over your son. Also, a lawyer can help negotiate any benefits or life insurance due your son. So sorry for your loss. Second or third vote for grief counseling to help you tell your son.